Good morning, YouTube. This is Spirit Journey, and today is May 12th, 2015, and it is 10.52 a.m. I uh, was watching a video um, earlier today, and uh, it was about the Akashic Record. The, the term Akashic, uh, the Sanskrit word, uh, some people just say, says it means, you know, about the, that it's the sky, you know, you know the space. And uh, I've never experienced the Akashic Record whatsoever, but I find the subject of such things very interesting. Well, I uh, was watching a video, and uh, the, the person who is being interviewed, he, he's a teacher, he teaches about the Akashic Record, he offers classes and things like that, but it was a particular thing that was said uh, during this uh, interview with this individual, and uh, it, it kind of stirred me. It, it, um, I was really tapping into something deep within me, and I wanted to discuss it with, uh, with you guys. Um, he was mentioning that one of the class, he, he teaches three levels on the Akashic Record, and he was informed after one of these classes that an individual that attended his class had, um, uh, I think, put an ad in a newspaper to offer classes himself on the same thing that he taught, you know? And, uh, you know, the, the initial response of the person who did the teaching was like, you know, what is this? You know, it, it, he was taken back and, and felt that it was, he was doing it all for money and, you know, but it had me think on, on many different levels about this. On the surface, I, I would, I felt the same way as the, the teacher and author, you know, that it's something that you take pride in and, you know, someone is just, you know, something sacred and then you go run out and, and um, you know, do it for money, you know, make money off of it, you know, right away. And yeah, I, I, I understood that, and I would probably feel the same way. But I, I really started thinking deeper about it. That, it, you know, it's hard for me to express. Well, initially, I said to myself, okay, that things of a spiritual nature or people who are categorized as a profound or spiritual, that um, you respect it, and you, you, you revere it. But you know with metaphysics, you know, if this is considered a type of metaphysics, it, it, it seems like it doesn't know the difference between um, whether someone reveres something or not, because the laws, the, the universal laws, applies in any situation. Like a, like a gun, you know, someone can have a gun, and it says a, a gun, you know, knows no name. Whatever what you you point at and you shoot, you know, you press the trigger, it's going to go and hit a target. And that target um, could be the nicest person in the world, and uh, it, 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 it it'll, it'll kill the person regardless. And you can have a, a so-called bad person, and if he's in the way in the way of that bullet, they'll get hit too. Or let's say he was over on, on he or she was over on the side, and 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 he he gets missed. He, he doesn't get hit, but someone else, an innocent bystander, you know. So, part of me saying that it is meant that pure intention, but it seems like. Some applications of metaphysics has nothing to do with what you feel and what you, it's about, it's, it's like, it's an energy. And an energy you can use for good or for bad. It's not saying, oh, well, I like you because, you know, you wear spiritual clothing and, and you, you, you're soft-spoken, you, you love your parents. It knows no name. 
And uh, I was thinking about in my life um, that I may have had the pureness of heart to something, but all my pureness of heart did not put in fruition a, a particular thing that I wanted. You know, um, let's say, uh, let's say that it was a job. You might have all the pureness of heart, but maybe, but maybe people didn't like you, or maybe, maybe um, you know, it just didn't fit, or maybe you didn't get that raise, and some new person, you know, and so it it didn't matter. It didn't it didn't matter that what was in my heart to something. But you're dealing with all these different energies, and again, the energy knows no name. It just knows uh, if you can pull the trigger or not. <laughs> that's what that's that's what it reminded reminded me of. You know that that principle. I'm, I'm talking about different principles of of something. And again, I I'm, I uh, I knew with all this, you know, metaphysics, Akashic records. I, I just learned the term. I think it was last year. I didn't know what it was, and I still don't really know what it is, and I, I've, I've never had access to it. So I'm thinking, well, how does someone get access to something like that? Let's say someone's in a class. Is it, is it based on how nice you are to access it? I mean, I've listened to different videos over YouTube on the content budget, and some people say, you know, you have to eat a certain diet. Some people might may say, okay, you have to do these deep breathing and things like that. But I'm seeing that with the, the, the supernatural or the, the um, metaphysical, you know, that some people have experiences that are spontaneous. I met a person who was sharing me just yesterday that. Um, they were, they were sleeping, and they had a dream, and this person um, appeared in their dream, and X, Y, and Z happened in the dream, and then about, I think maybe, what's that, six, six weeks later, this, this particular person who was relating this story to me had an opportunity to go overseas, right, at, I think to Peru. And she was to be used as a translator because she spoke the language of the, the, the region. And so she took the opportunity and went. And uh, they arrived at their destination. And the woman that was in her dream said, I was waiting for you. I thought when I saw you that you were going to come then, but you're coming now. And this same individual had another spontaneous um, event while driving in a car. And so I guess what I'm getting at is, like, part of me is thinking, okay, if I, you know, by good works, you know, again, as I shared many times on my channel, that um, I was raised um, my, my adult life as a Christian, and and my mindset of Christianity was about works and to be a so-called good person. And in my in my my Christian walk, that success and things like that had nothing to do with being a good person. And it was about, I think, what we call energy. You know, some people resonate with other people's energy. And um, that attraction, or, or it could be favoritism. Uh, I, I knew of a person, um, I used to work in this retail store, and this was right after um, the September 11, um, 2001 um, tragedy with the Twin Towers. And work was very hard to come by, and uh, this was December at this time, and um, this person is a, a woman, and she was really trying to impress the people, uh, the, the, because uh, she was there for, the, um, just for the Christmas, you know, the holiday season, and the contract, just like mine was to be up, 
uh, the first week of January. But some of the people were told that they would be hired um, permanently after the contract is up. But she wants to impress and she had even made, um, sold $5,000 worth of perfume and makeup in one day, okay? And then one day I saw her, it was at the, I think the, the beginning of January, and I see her walking past me with like a, with anger and hurt. They didn't hire her, you know, so hear her efforts. And uh, anybody wants a job and, you know, pay their bills and all that. They didn't hire her, even though she was a high performer, but, uh, in hindsight, her energy, you know, she she was who she wanted. But, again, she, she just wanted to, you know, do a good job so she get to, you know, to keep a job. So here, this principle that, you know, sometimes uh, about his ability, you know, um, she had ability to sell, but it didn't keep her a job. Well, there's something else that I experienced that, I mean, that, that yeah, that I was just experienced to, that, um, this, this person I met was, um, offered a position, you know, they, they, um, it was at a hotel, um, the, the food department, and the person was bragging and saying, oh, you know, I've never been a union employee. When I, when I started with the company, they, they offered me the management position. And the company would only give these type of positions to Europeans or whites. The man that was in charge of the kitchen, he was from, he was a German-speaking Swiss man. And so, you know, everybody else was uh, people of color. And so again, it, it had no, um, it, didn't, it didn't matter about the man's ability or inability. It was about the other person and what they wanted and he was able to um, possibly fulfill the person's need for that position. And again, you know, some people have different skills. Um, I met another woman who, you know, the, lo the laws of the you know, metaphysics were without play. If, 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 I, if you could even consider that, uh, this person, um, she, it was interesting, she was a, a robber. She used to um, steal, she used to go to jewelry stores and, and steal jewelry. She was arrested. She gets out of jail and meets with the, the owner or, you know, manager of a jewelry uh, chain store. Uh, I mean, it's a series of stores. They had many locations. And she, you know, they knew about her past. And she said, oh, I'll make it. So she had the gift, this woman. She had the gift of communication. Uh, or some people might call it a hustle. And convince them they should hire her and that they'll make she'll make them a lot of money. And no she did. She had the gift of communication. She she wasn't afraid. She actually loved she her motivation was money. She had and she shared with me, you know, a love of money and that she wanted her dream was to meet Bill Gates. This was this this story happened maybe 17 or 18 years ago, maybe 17 years ago, and um, she, she, she had no shame about lying to the customer about a product or what they had, and um, she, you know, the, the customer said, you know, show me the least expensive item, and, and she wouldn't, it. just show them something expensive and try to convince them that this is the, the, the lower end stuff. And she made a lot of money for the company. It was, it was, it was phenomenal. But why I mentioned her was um, her ability. She, 
on one occasion, she was um, dusting the uh, a table, you know, that was in front of a window, and we had the window open, and it was, it was a, a storefront on the on the main strip. And uh, at this establishment, we had to, you know, say like a a speech. I, I don't know the term, but you had to say something, and this was like an invitation for those who were here to come on into the store. And so she was doing that as she was polishing, you know, dusting off the tabletop. She, her heart wasn't in it what she was saying, but she was just saying it. And, you know, she had two things going on at once, polishing, you know, being proactive. And I, I witnessed this with my own eyes. You know, she was standing in front of me. And I, again, I'm at my end of the window, and I see a woman running to our school because they hear her speak, you know, the woman that's dusting, and, and races into the store to, to talk to her, to see the children. And she was making money. She, she, she didn't even have, she didn't even have effort, you know, it was really no effort for her to do that. But she had a gift. She had, she, 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 so her ability had nothing to do with her character. It was, she was using principle and uh, awful skill. And another, another aspect of her is that she was confident. And I see with myself that then I didn't have confidence. If you lack confidence, it's going to show. And, and she even said something about that to me. She was, she was laughing and said, you know, you know you're just saying it, but you're, you're afraid to make money. And I realized, in, in, uh, in hindsight, that she was right. If you, I, I, was, I was admitting fear. And, be, and, and, the, and people could pick that up. And some people may be afraid but they know how to mask it and work through it and, and still project enough energy or the, the or just you know, like a puppet, just do what um what they're told to do. Because again, the lady was just doing just saying it out of her mouth and dusting and you know, just to be proactive. Her heart was not in it at the time. So that person that heard her didn't know that she was polishing a, you know, dusting the tabletop or anything. But she, 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 this woman um, that was dusting, her, her, her mind was so set. She was there to make money, and she loved the money, and she made a lot of money. So, I, in, in saying this, and, and why I share this, is that. Like this person that I was teaching the about the Akashic records that I was listening to listening to today, that certain abilities. This person who taught the class, um, even after one one class with the, the teacher, had the confidence to teach the class. They were not an expert, but they talked, they discussed whatever, you know, whatever was the material that that person offered that person, they used that material, put it out in a newspaper, and got people to go there, to, to go to their class, you know. They had confidence. And I think maybe, maybe with metaphysics entering the uh, concert records, maybe part of it is about confidence. And maybe if I um, had more confidence, um, which means to you know remove fear, maybe that this would help me ascend to a higher spiritual level, you know? Because again, a bullet knows no name, and whatever what you pull, you know, that, that, that projectile is going to hit the target. So I have to um, get a target, pull the trigger, and have confidence behind it. And again, as process, as, as time goes on, you know, um, the, 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 the knowledge behind it will grow too. Just like the person that's 
uh, was teaching the, the uh, cost of record class. Even the, they just had one, one, cla one or two classes. You know, I think they, they were teaching level one, two, and three, and I think they were teaching one, level one and two. It, you know, almost immediately. They got the material, they got the information. You know, and they had the confidence, hey, let me do that. And yes, people came. And it had nothing to do with their integrity. Most people say that person didn't have integrity or respect for knowledge of teaching a so-called sacred thing, you know? It had nothing to do with sacred. It had to do with, I got the information and I'm going to use it. Some people get information and just sit on it. And it's valuable. Knowledge, knowledge is. Knowledge is not good or bad, it's what we do with it. And that, that even reminds me of a story <laughs> regarding the, the group, the Spice Girls. And I think I might have mentioned them before in one of my early, the earlier videos. This group started out in the 19, early 1990s, I think it was. And they, they, they are from all different backgrounds in, in Britain. And uh, the person who, you know, formed the group, you know, put it out in a newspaper. And uh, I think he, yeah, I think he worked by himself. He was a young fellow in his 20s. And the ladies were ready, you know, they, 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 you know, they, they practiced together and, and they had to live in a house together so they can form like a union, you know, so they really feel like one, you know. And the, the man who formed the group, um, he, like the ladies said, you know, hey, come on, let's, let's go out and make some music, Let, let's do it now. And he was just supporting them. He just kept them in the house and they got restless. So one of the lady, ladies, um, she was a um, ginger spice. She was the woman with the red hair. She goes, and, and some of the other ladies I think waited for her, you know, but she went, she, she wanted to make music. She, wa she wanted to perform. She wanted to be out there. She goes and finds a, I guess he was a producer or something meets with him, and the rest is history. Also to know, well, the, the man who formed the group, the Spice Girls, he, he didn't, he was very young, and he, he, he just, he wanted to just hold them and just look at his masterpiece, this potential he has, just looking at it, wow, and go, whoa, yes, yeah, it's all mine. But he was afraid. To, let, to, to, to make it happen. He just wanted to look at it and, and gawk at it. It was, a, he, he, it was, I guess, a sense of control. But you know, <laughs> that potential can escape. And that's what it did. He was hoarding it and wasn't making it happen. And this potential said, it's, 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 it's now or never. And that's why they went. And the, the, the um, uh, largest selling female band uh, in history, uh, at least in, in Britain, but I think it could be, um, uni you know, universal, their, their popularity at that time. So that also has to do with fear. Maybe this, this, this young, I think he was 27 at the time, maybe he was afraid too. Fear. It kept them back. Something kept them back. That he had all the skill. He formed that group. He formed it. Gave him the songs, I think. You know? But that wasn't enough. It wasn't enough that he had the talent to form a group. He also needed the wisdom and the boldness to say, okay, it's time now. And just like the guy who's teaching the uh, acoustic class, you know, he may not have been a pro. He may not have known nothing. He might be all just head knowledge. It didn't matter. He had the information, and someone was willing to buy his information. Just like someone was willing to buy the, the Spice Girl record and, and form a contract. Okay? So I guess also it's about timing and using wisdom and to make it happen. 
And that's what that author and teacher of that Pasha directive was, was, was about. He, he was a teacher. And he thought about, you know, using this to better your life. Get the information to better the life that you live in. And unfortunate that uh, his student took that to the extreme and said, yeah, I'm gonna, I want to make it happen for me. And he had one class, <laughs> got the information, and uh, uh, advertised that he got clients. And what's ironic about it is that he can probably outsell his teacher. Is that something? I'm sure you guys out there have known of people, maybe you had a friend and you had a job and you brought your friend in to, you know, get, get, him, get him some money, whatever, and your friend becomes your boss. <laughs> even though you might, you might even train him. So it's ironic how things happen and how the energies bounce back and forth that you may not even expect that to happen. It could come out of nowhere. And the teacher was, yeah, the teacher was upset. And, you know, your friend might have been upset. You got them a job and he might have kicked you out of the job. So, you know, all these things, emotions and feelings were coming at me. And it was hitting me strong. It was weird. It really touched into something. And it just reminded me that you know, how vulnerable we can be at times, and that sometimes it's really not all about you. It's about um, how those, what, what you do with what you have, the, the energies behind it, and taking opportunity, and again, you know, don't be fearful, you know, and if you have some fear, you know, to push through it, you know. So that's what I got out of listening to that, that video on the Apostles records and its access, you know. So, again, this is my spirit journey, and, um, wow, it's just a lot of, a lot out there, and, um, yeah, it's, I, it's so much that I don't know. But I want to share this with you, uh, because someone else might be there, and they might be beating up themselves and saying, how come I can't achieve this level, or, or how come I'm afraid, whatever. To know that other people are going through the same thing um, could be of comfort, and let you know you're not alone, and with every breath that you take, you know, take that as an opportunity to just say, okay, let me just try again, okay? So, that's all I want to share with you, and... Uh, Peace and joy on your spirit journey, and uh, please feel free to subscribe, share, and to like. Peace. Bye-bye.